Hey all, good evening and welcome to another session with me, Varun Rao, on Tech Tablet. And in today's session, let us continue from where we left behind in the earlier one and let us begin with SAP reports, all right? We would be just uh, beginning with basics of, re of reporting, you know, probably the first step towards reporting, we'll understand what reports are and look at, you know, some basic levels of coding. And this is only for beginners or people who, you know, who, who, who are probably looking forward to understand if a map is the right module for them and if they can cope up with this or not, or if it's the right choice. So you know, this is basically to give you an idea of what it is. And we would also be looking at the initial levels of coding, all right? And this is how a standard code generally looks like, okay? You give your code a name that is what is written in line number one. And then you have a structure that is defined followed by the name of the table and the table type and the row structure that is to be called or the, name, the same structure that you created at the top. All right. And we will now just go ahead and create a small report and see how do we work with a report. All right. So now what I would be doing is let me take you to the map screen. Here we have a T code that is SC38. Right. And when I go to SC38, I would now take you to you know a new program. We can we can just create on this. And now I'll just give it a title. All right. You can give any title that you want, and I will be doing my first code probably. And the type would be an executable program. All right, I will now click on save. I would work on a local object. I think that should do just fine for me. Right, so I have a report which is inactive um, as of now. But then uh, before we activate it, let us, you know, just write a small statement, uh, a write statement. That's it. And let's see what happens. Um, so write, and I just want to write, write down my name, probably. All right. And this module that we are working on, it is SAP ABAP, right? So SAP ABAP would be here. And now let me just check if there's any inconsistencies. It says no syntax errors found. So let me activate it. All right, goes active. And now uh, let us, you know, go ahead and process this. So it, it's, you know, showing me my name with the output. But then uh, I want to get the SAP ABAP app in my second line. So in order to do that, we would have to use a slash. All right, so this is my second step again. When you you can directly you know check, activate, and execute. So now I have it in my second line. Now let us make some more changes to this, like color. Okay, I would like to change my color. Uh, now when you talk of color, SAP ABAP in general provides for around seven colors. So you can you know go and fiddle around with some colors of your choice that is also an option that you have all right now i would like to give it a color of anything within seven so i'll we'll just try five okay uh let us check activate and execute so you see you have a green color for this now if you change this to four and see you know what change you might probably have you would have another color and we'll see okay now it's blue All right so you have a series of seven colors which can be tested for now let us say i want to get you know this is the, you know, the output they, they just see both of them they're just one below another now i would like to take them 10 lines below or something like that now in order to do that i would you know just enter the digit of you know lines that I wanted to go and you know execute it. 
So you would see that it's gone ten. It's taken ten spaces, uh, you know, to the right. But then, if you want the you know same change to happen for you know the up, the upper thing, you have to you, for the upper thing as in the name which is here, you can make the required change there, and it will take you know it will do the required effect for you to ensure that your code is moving to the required place. All right. Now you also have something called as skip. A, a, the, the syntax skip would also work equally good. Now, before that, let me just add 10 here as well to see what change we might probably have. So both of them are now, uh, have moved 10 spaces. All right, now let me just use a new term. All right. And I would like to do the right again. Okay. And here, let me add the word skip. Okay, so this is the change of uh, code which I have brought and will now execute this. So you see, you have a space that is coming in between both the lines. Uh, earlier, both of them were, you know, just one below another. Let me just remove this and activate it again. So as a standard practice, each and every time now, now if you're able to see, there's no gap between them. And if you add a uh, skip here, we would now have a gap. All right. So that is the thing. Now, if you want to take a gap of 10 lines, you can just do this. Tip 10 should do the work for us. So you have 10 lines of gap between them that's being created. All right, now what we'll do is let's see uh, how parameters and you know things like that are created. So now what I'll do is let me just quickly delete this. All right. Uh, this, this term parameters is pretty important. Uh, we cannot, uh, you know, skip it. Now, when I see parameters, you know, you have a lot of parameters that you can create. So first let's begin with name and this name would have uh, 10 spaces between the Okay, and the type would be a character format, right? So this is the uh, code that I have entered. Now let me just, you know, check this and activate this. And we would be able to see that, you know, you would be having a box with the word name, all right? And here you can just, enter whatever it is and it, it, it would restrict you to 10 spaces after 10 spaces no matter whatever you enter it would not take in um, another value all right but then if you want to write this uh, you know there's nothing happening right now there's no output that's being generated okay now even now so now if you want to write this name then what you've got to do is you have to use the right command because right command would be generating your output okay now if i do this ideally i should be uh, you know having the name which i print or which i type there in my output so now if i type varun and if i click on execute you would see my name is you know getting printed in the output so write command basically acts as an output okay now, as I've already been talking about it, all these are free sessions just to, you know, encourage beginners or to encourage all those who have just moved into this. But then, as, you know, if you're looking or if probably any of your friends are looking for in depth of, of this, you could always let us know. Uh, right. Now, just like uh, how we have a type C, you have 
lot of uh, you know types available now for example let's go with type d now when you go with type d d is generally a date type all right now whenever you have a date type you enter a date okay now let me just check this Oh yeah, date has to have eight letter, eight characters, right? It cannot be ten. So now let me check this. All right. So basically, you know, when you use the date format, it will not have any effect because date any which ways has eight, uh, you know, character sets in it. So yeah, eight you know, digits. Now uh, you just enter uh, the date. It's zero one twelve. 2018 all right and when you get a print of this this is how you would be having okay so this is how the date format would be taking it up right um, you know these are the things that you have to see when you are working on coding because you know until unless you do not execute uh, each of them and see you would not be having a perfect idea of what is what so just like dates you have different uh, you know variants that you could Try with okay, and the different variants are you have characters, you have int, uh, you have number, you have date, okay, you have uh, float, you have a lot of stuff that you can you know uh, fiddle around with. I would uh, rec recommend and encourage you to go ahead and try working on all these modules or or, or sorry try working on all these models. All right, now let us just uh, go back. Sorry, go ahead and see how. Can we just work with two parameters? Okay. Now I'm just deleting this and this. Okay. I want two boxes. So first box uh, or, or both the boxes would be of you know integer variant this time. So I would go with P1 uh, type I and P2 type I. Right. All right now let me just go ahead so now you are able to see that i have two boxes which uh, are which would work as parameters all right but now i would want to work on a small logic okay uh, i would want to see how to do some addition all right and i would want to see the addition of the uh, numbers in p1 plus p2 in my output Okay, now we just see how do we uh, do it. Okay, now when you talk of coding, um, I have uh, you know learned things uh, the wrong way because when I began coding, I did not start to think algorithmically. Rather, I tried to understand things uh, in in in, a co in in terms of coding, which is wrong. So you know, rather uh, I would not feel wrong to say uh, it took me a lot of time to understand that. When you go ahead and start coding, you just have to understand things, not kind of remember the models, which is where I went wrong. So I would request you not to remember the uh, models or not to remember, try to remember the code, uh, which a lot of developers like me have done and you know they learn things slowly. The best way is to start thinking algorithmically and that's what um, you know I would be trying to tell you in these sessions or you know that's what i that's how i try to uh, train candidates uh, after i have learned from my mistakes so uh, p2 would be equal to uh, sorry p3 would be equal to p2 plus p1 all right and i would write the p3 in the output so as we know we've just seen a while back P3 uh, or the write statement would always act as an uh, as an output uh, thing. Okay, so it would give you the output. Okay, so it's saying that there is some error. Let me just see what the error is. Okay, save this. It says P3 is unknown. Okay, all right, all right. I have you know, not defined P3, right? So you know that is where I went wrong. 
So here, uh, you know, after the parameters, I've also got to define uh, P3, right? So it would be uh, data. <clears throat> and the data that I would be taking is uh, P3 type I. All right, now let me check. Right now, let's say there's no error. See, the, the data would be um, the place where my output would be generated. All right, check is done. There's no syntax error. Now let me activate the same. All right, the object is activated. Let me go ahead and test this. So five plus five. So ten. Right, and my first code, al my first algorithmic code is now here. Now, I would encourage you to go ahead and start working on, uh, you know, different uh, variants of output. Okay, um, just, just go ahead and uh, don't, don't think about what would happen if something might go wrong. Uh, it's always recommended, uh, you know, as long as you have taken access to a demo server, it's, it depends on you uh, as to how you are maneuvering and taking things forward, all right? So I wish you and all the best uh, on this and I hope you've learned something on today's session. And in the upcoming session, we would uh, take this forward and we shall also look at how to uh, work on some more details on reporting. I hope you have enjoyed watching today's session. Uh, and if you have any queries on this or if you have any queries on the training part, you can always uh, you have the comment section below. You can feel free to ask or write to us. If you liked what's been shown to you, then please hit the like button as it would encourage us to do further. You can always hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to have regular notifications and follow us as to what are the updates. And do share this if you feel that there's anyone who might, who, whom you might feel that you know might find this useful. As that's the motive. We're just trying to help as many as possible. Uh, on these free sessions which are being posted out of passion. So thanks a lot for being with us. Uh, I wish you all the best and keep coding, keep growing. Have a great day ahead. In the next video, uh, we would be uh, you know, talking of further on reports which would be coming on the next alternate day. All right, thank you.